Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special Sunday evening episode of Mock Draft Madness. On Real Hawk Talk, I'm Brian M. Hauser. You can find me on Twitter, at Hawk Blogger. And folks, I don't know about you, but I am thinking about football an abnormal amount. Maybe maybe it's normal for me. I don't know. But I am really intrigued by what's going on uh, for the Seahawks this offseason. I think this is a special offseason with a lot to, to be interested in and analyze and excited about. So I'm uh, going to do a bunch of ad additional content. I've got more time to do it this year than I've had in past years. And if you haven't already, this is the time to, first of all, do the simple thing. Give the show a like. Click subscribe. Uh, for all of these shows that I am going to do, and I'm going to tell you in a second just how many of these shows I'm planning to do, uh, all the chat, live chat, which is one of the most fun parts of this, I think, is going to be limited to people that are subscribers to the YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, click subscribe. You will immediately be able to uh, get into the chat and then be part of the live chat. Uh, we are closing in on 10,000 subscribers. Would love to, to roll right past that and get on to bigger and, and larger community. So click subscribe. Uh, and then um, also, if you haven't done it already, join as a member on YouTube. There are already people joining that community and we're gonna do some special things. Anyone that is a member on YouTube will get priority responses to their comments, to their questions. Uh, we will be doing some members only uh, live streams and members only chats so that we'll do some of these shows and only people that are members will be able to be in the live chat. I'm going to wait a little bit longer before we start kicking those off, but those are coming as well. And then as always, patreon.com slash hawkblogger. We just got a new patron. Uh, I want to welcome Dubs, uh, who just joined on patreon.com slash hawkblogger. Really going to grow that community. Love what's going on there. You get immediate access to the Slack channel where conversations always going on. You get to ask questions that we will answer each week on the Wednesday show with the crew. And all of these shows that are done outside of Wednesday will only be available on the audio podcast via Patreon. So you will need to go to Patreon if you want to get the audio versions for anything outside of the Wednesday show. And there may even be situations where we only create content that's available for either members on YouTube or Patreon members. So uh, now's a great time to join. And here's the other thing. I've been kind of debating this, uh, whether I want to try to commit to it. But here's the thing, folks. Um, I'm going to try this. I don't know if I'm going to succeed, but sometimes you just got to put yourself out there. So the NFL draft, the NFL draft is going to occur on April 25th of this year for a couple of days, April 25th to the 27th. It is currently March 24th. What I want to try to do for all of you is I am going to have. I'm going to go live every single day, at least every weekday, Monday through Friday. In addition to our normal Wednesday show, I will likely also go live on weekends, but I can't say for sure it will be every weekend day. And I'm not going to only, I will mostly be talking like 90%, 80% talking about what's going on with the Seahawks, going on about the draft. We'll likely talk about trying to get additional guests on and put a little bit more effort into to bringing other people onto the show. But uh, I will also probably talk a little bit about the Mariners. So if you're not a Mariners fan, that's probably bad news. But baseball season's rolling around. I'm a big Mariners fan. And so I will likely try to do a morning show every day drive time, maybe 7.30 a.m., 8 a.m. We'll see how my schedule works out. But I'm going to try to go live every single day. And uh, so this is a great time. Those shows, all of those shows, at least from an audio perspective, are going to be only available to patrons and YouTube members. So um, I see that there's a question in here from uh, Max B about the difference between YouTube membership and Patreon membership and can you consolidate? You know, 
I'm playing around with this stuff, so I'm learning as we go. Um, and I think we're going to be able to do a pretty good job for all. So if you're trying to decide which one to do, um, this is how it currently breaks down. It doesn't mean it will always be this way. I'll do my best. I'm going to try for Patreon folks to give them everything I possibly can because those folks have been around for a long time. Uh, they are where we've been growing the community. And so if you have to choose one, I think I would probably pick Patreon. Um, that's the only one that gets you access to the Slack channel as of now. It is the only one where all of the audio podcasts will go on. Okay. So that's the preferred one um, in, in that sense. YouTube, the YouTube memberships are going to get you special privileges on YouTube shows. You will get uh, priority answers to your questions and comments in the chat. There is a community tab in YouTube where I will start posting some different questions. I posted something this week, start to have more conversation there. And we will do more shows that are only for members. Okay. So there will be some exclusive YouTube member only shows. There will be some shows that have during the live feed member only chat, member only Q and a. And so, you know, if you want to totally have your bases covered, you can join both and you can look at the, the membership levels, uh, on YouTube, very reasonable. Um, and then, and then Patreon as well. So, I'm going to do my best to give you a great experience wherever you're supporting the show. But, uh, you know, I'm learning and playing around with this stuff. So I uh, want to see what's possible. And look, um, we've given away over $260,000 to charity. I'd like to see just how far, how high we can push that. Um, I'd like to get Jeff a new microphone, who I'm about to send a join link so he can join this show. Uh, that's not cheap. And so, you know, I want to cover my costs for all the stuff we're going to be doing, um, increase the quality and bring on additional folks. But I need some support from all of you in order to do that. So uh, patreon.com slash hawk blogger and or the YouTube membership. All right. So um, whoops, I was about to share my screen. That's not what I want to do. Let me give this invite link to Jeff, um, who I think is trying to join. And uh, one second. Um, all right. Uh, one more second, folk. Okay. So um, tonight, what are we going to talk about tonight? Um, well, there's a few things I, I've been listening to some different pods myself and trying to explore what's going on with the Seahawks. And there's a few things that kind of caught my attention this week. Um, one, uh, I think if folks have been following the show uh, the last few weeks, you'll have noticed we had our first mock draft madness a week ago, Monday, and I had a I had a mock draft that I just did not like, did not like it. And part of what I didn't like about it is I had some good players show up and I traded back to get a second round pick and gave up what I thought were more highly qualified blue chip style players for guys that uh, I don't think are quite as, as, as great. Um, and so that's one piece where uh, I had some some consternation about that and want to kind of look when we do some mock drafts tonight about how we change that and how we try to target that differently. Another thing, and I want to take one second here and welcome Drew Downs. Drew Downs just joined on Patreon.com. Thank you, Drew. Welcome to the club. Appreciate having you. Um, Patreon.com slash Hawkblogger. Join now. It's a good time to do it. Uh, the other thing is I, I was listening to, let me make sure I've got this right. I think it's Joel. Well, I should just look it up to make sure I get it right. Uh, I was listening to the PFF podcast. We can talk about that. But then what was the other one I was listening to? I think it's Joel Klatt, but might be uh, Joel 
Klatt? Yeah, the Joel Klatt show. Uh, and listening to him talk about spending time with Mike McDonald and the way that he likes to build his defenses. And it just got me thinking about what, if you think about Michigan, if you think about Baltimore, you don't really think about edge rushers as much. Aiden Hutchinson is an example of one that came out of Michigan. So definitely include him in the conversation. But it really features the defensive tackles. And in, in all those situations, the defensive tackles were plentiful, aggressive, impactful. And I have this, it has renewed my interest in whether or not, uh, even with signing by, you know, um, Leonard Williams, even with adding uh, Jonathan Hankins, um, whether or not the Seahawks may be in the market for another defensive tackle if it falls to them at 16, uh, it's on my mind. And the guy that actually, uh, the guy that actually um, turned me on to that Joel Clapp podcast was Jeff Simmons, who's now joining the show at Real Jeff Simmons. Jeff, I just was telling folks we're we're gonna get you we're gonna get you a, a higher quality mic, so that's that's gonna make everybody excited. But but how are you doing? First of all, my friend. Oop, I'm not hearing you. You're not on mute, so uh, something else is an issue. No. Nope, still nothing. While you're trying to figure that out, I want to welcome Alex L., who just joined on Patreon.com. Thank you, Alex, for supporting the show. Love it. Appreciate it. Um, great to see. I'm just going to keep trying to figure that out, and we'll, we'll get Jeff on here in a second. But... Uh, Point being that I am just wondering if defensive tackle is going to be a position that ends up being very different than what we saw with Pete Carroll. It was not a featured part of that defense. It was not a featured priority in free agency or in other places with Pete Carroll. He was more of an edge guy. Um, is that going to affect how Mike McDonald approaches? The other thing that has been an observation for me this week, really thinking about it, is I don't think that the Seahawks have done almost anything for Ryan Grubb. Mike McDonald brought him in here to build a new offense. And as of yet, they've added nothing to that offense. They've brought back Noah Fant. They have restructured Tyler Lockett's contract to make sure he's here for one more year. You could say they signed Nick Harris, who's maybe going to battle for the center position, but likely a backup. Say they, they signed George Fant, who is really a backup swing tackle. You know, you could say Pharaoh Brown is another tight end, but uh, I don't think you can really make the case that they've given Ryan Grubb anything new to work with. And how is that going to factor into the 16th pick? Are they going to feel the need to... Is, is Mike McDonald going to feel this need to make sure it's like, hey, if we want to run the ball, if that's a primary part of what we want to do, is offensive line going to be something that they decide is a priority? So I think those are two things that that have stood out to me. Um, let's see if we can bring Jeff Simmons back on, see if that works any better. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, dude. How are you doing? Let's go. Um, yeah, this is the most Canadian thing ever, but I was playing hockey tonight. So. Hey. Do ah, we just, we just play like a weekly pickup game and so I hadn't played in like a month so it was it was nice to do some exercise tonight. Oh my gosh, yeah! I just finished a quick hike with Finn, our dog, and uh, was listening to a couple podcasts, including that Joel Clat one that you you'd mentioned, and uh, I was like, ah oh, man, I, I just want to talk. I, I you probably didn't hear this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to go live every day. From between every now, day between now and the draft and we're gonna see how that goes so yeah man we're a month away like like i, I put out a tweet today just to like see what, the engagement i got today of that tweet was great like i was just wanting to know like who does everyone want at this point like we've done so many of these mocks already but like and this draft just feels so unique because of the quarterbacks and there's potentially gonna be four to maybe even six that go before seattle picks 
if Denver and Oakland or whatever they're not Oakland, but Las Vegas, somewhere between four and six quarterbacks. So 16 is usually kind of like a like if you look at who went last year at 16 and 15, it's like Emmanuel Forbes and like it's not a very exciting group this year because all the quarterbacks and receivers, it's pushing guys down to like you're looking at top 10 players that you'd be like top seven players on defense. I think that there are the more I've looked at this draft, the more I feel like there are I don't think there's a ton of blue chips like true blue chips and that's typical I think that some of them are going to get pushed down out of the top 10 because of the quarterbacks I think that offensive tackle is also a great position in this draft but is also going to push down some other positions because there's teams that really need to protect the quarterbacks that they're spending this money on or their draft capital on and then there's receivers, which is a, pr a premium position. And the way I see it, Jeff, I think all the way, I think the strength of this draft in a lot of ways is the second round. I think there are going to be guys, I think there's maybe half to three quarters of the guys drafted in the second round could be close to first round grade guys. Like I, I think there's, I think when we talk about Tavondre sweat getting drafted in the second round, that's a guy I think could end up being first round talent. When you talk about Ricky Pearsall, like some of these receivers, Troy Fl Franklin is a guy that a lot of people like, like on and on and on. I think the quality of talent in the second round, I don't think there's much of a drop off almost at all from the back of the end of the first round. Yeah. Timing is not John Schneider's thing. Cause this would have been the great draft to have five twenty and those two picks in the second round. Like I was looking at the draft now, here's who went 13 Lucas Van Ness. 15 was Will McDonald. 16 was Emmanuel Forbes. 18 was Jack Campbell. And then some of the guys who went to the top of the second round, like Derek Hall and Matthew Bergeron and Jonathan Mingo, like the name of this year, we we were like obsessed over John Michael Schmitz, who turned out like he was fine. He was fine. Was not it's a just, breakout star. He was not. I think just because we were so – and like the timing in the draft class makes such a difference. It's unfortunate that like this would be a much better draft than that five pick in. But – you're mm -hmm. right. I think the strength that really is where the Seahawks are, like ten to twenty, and then that second round looks really. And again, the last mock show we did is where I got really conflicted. Of like, they're in that weird spot where like either you take the really good guy at sixteen, but like you're giving up the second round pick by doing that. So they're in a tough spot, man. Well, so I want to turn your, your question a little bit back around on you. And, and I posted something like this as well, where I think that there is a 75% chance, maybe greater, that one of these five players will be available at 16. Jared Verse, Byron Murphy, Troy Fatanu, Talis Fuaga, uh, or Brock Bowers. I think one of those five could be available and is likely to be available at 16. If you could only have one, if you could choose which one of those guys fell to you at 16, who are you choosing? Me or who I think John Who Schreiber? are you choosing? Fuaga. Fuaga, I think that guy is just a stud. I think he's... Like, I like Fatanu a lot. Uh, I've talked about him and Byron Murphy, but Fuaga, to me, is everything this team isn't right now. Like, they're kind of soft up front. Fuaga's like an ass kicker. He's a mauler. He's physical. Like, like when Abe Lucas was going a couple years ago, he was that. But Fuaga, to me, is a guy, like, he's a top. And, again, like, Murphy and Fatanu are the guys I put out today on my tweet. So they're right there. So it's first. But Fuaga, to me, is, like, everything I've been – thing that this team's been lacking for years. I think he is so strong and so physical and 
He would hedge Lucas as well long term. I think he would be like, I think he's a top 10 pick in almost every draft. So to get him at 16 would be unbelievable to me. I wouldn't certainly not be upset about that. For me, I think it's Jared Verse. Yeah. I, uh, I just, I really, really like his game. Uh, Matt Miller, who, despite being a 49ers fan, I still read his stuff. Uh, he came out with his revised top 50. And he had compare like comparables for all the players. And his comparable for Jared Verse was Trey Hendrickson, which I think is actually a really good one. That's, that's because exactly Verse is not, I don't see Verse as like, he's not the bend, I mean, he is bendy, but he's not the around the edge, uh, you know, around the hula hoop kind of guy. He is someone that's going to like speed to power, just drive you back into the quarterback. And I think that just plays so well. I mean, if you're a guy that can get that kind of leverage on the edge, that plays in the run game, it plays in the pass game. And uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you could insert a Trey Hendrickson into the Seahawks front line, that would be great. But one of the things I was talking about, Jeff, and then we'll, we'll get in here and do some mock drafts, is on that show with Joel Klatt where he talked about all the time he spent with Mike McDonald and that they build this run wall like that that's priority number one and you can see it already happening the Seahawks we went over it on one of our last shows all the defensive linemen interior linemen they already have on this roster but what you don't really see is like there's not as much focus on the edge they have some guys that play on the edge but there's not the Aiden Hutchinson is a guy that came from University of Michigan on the edge. But for the most part, it's the defensive tackles that are the, the stars, like the, that are the focal point of that, that type of defense rotating all the time. So I wonder if Jared Verse and Byron Murphy were both sitting there at 16. I'm not sure that Verse would be the priority for, for Mike McDonald. Yeah, it was interesting. Clatt and Matt Miller at the same comp for Murphy. I just pulled up the article. And Justin Matabuke, who uh, really developed under Mike McDonald, just got the franchise tag. He's making, and then he signed this, this extension. He's making like $25 billion a year player now. Uh, Brian, you put out a tweet last week, which made me think initially that Murphy would be out. And you mentioned all the defensive tackles they have on their team which is obviously crazy compared to last year when everyone's like, they have no defensive tackles. But then I watched that class show and hearing how he talked about it. And then I looked back and beyond this year, like there's not a lot. Jaron Reed's in the last year of his deal. Mm -hmm. uh, Hankins is 32. He's in a one-year deal. If they can really have that, they don't really have, like they have Cam Young and Mike Morris who are more depth players at this point. They, they, they don't seem that high on Cam Young. They're blocking him with Hankins and, they didn't bring back Mario Edwards because he's 280 pounds. And if they're really focused on just building up that defensive tackle group, when we just saw McDonald turn this guy into a $25 million player, <laughs> Murphy is now someone. Yeah, I think they're going to, and both of them made the exact same comp, the Matabuke to Murphy, their playing style. Again, they're going to have a ton of intel on him. Grubb and Huff, they spent a month studying Murphy for before that playoff game. So it it's hard for me seeing seeing how hard it is to get difference making defensive tackles. It is hard for me to see a guy like Murphy, who, in my opinion, is a top 10 talent. And other people have had him mocked in the top 10. So it's, I'm not alone in this. But to have someone like that fall to you at 16, have John Schneider admit that they the only time you can get these difference making defensive tackles is if you draft them early in the first round and to have that and know who Mike McDonald is and then to let that fall, like to, to let that go. That's tough. That's tough. So um, let's get into it. Let's do some mock drafts here. And we're going to, by popular demand, we're going to do, um, uh, we're going to do a couple drafts in different simulators. And tonight we are going to do pro football network, which is one that everybody seems to like to do. I find it a little bit slow 
So people will just have to bear with us, uh, but it's okay. Um, but we're going to start with this one. And let me go ahead and share my screen. And folks that are listening or following along, um, I'll do try to do a better job, especially for the audio folks, of telling folks what's going on on the screen. Um, but feel free, we will look at what everyone else is saying in chat. And if you want to be part of chat, all you got to do is subscribe to the channel. Um, and chat is open for all YouTube subscribers. And we will look to see what other people are saying, not just what we're seeing. And let me go ahead and put in this piece here. And uh, it's, there's a lot of ads on this one as well. So apologize for that, but it, it is what it is. So we are going to try the Pro Football Network um, uh, Sim is the first one we're going to do here, Jeff. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Gonna hide the draft uh, request. Okay, so let's go quick pick by pick here. Caleb Williams goes first. Chalk. JJ McCarthy goes second to Washington. Could happen, dude. Not not the craziest thing. I don't think it matters ultimately because like May will probably go there, and then McCarthy could go eight. So it doesn't really does not. It, yeah. it, it's and it was interesting this week, Mister Dan Quinn basically saying that they're open for business at the, at the second position. I think that could imply that they like a couple different quarterbacks. Yeah. And if, if I'm Washington and I can get a, I can get a mother load for the number two pick. If number one is really like off the table, which it seems like it would seems be that way. Yeah. Then two could be a pretty valuable position. You could get, could you get three first round picks? You could at least get two plus a second, I would think, for for that. Um, I think so. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Jaden Daniels, I continue to say, like, I love his athleticism. I really question him as a passer. I I'm not sure that he's going to be the NFL player. Marvin Harrison Jr., I just have to think Arizona, what we've seen from them so far, they're going to trade out of this spot. Hey, did you see what the GM said? No. He said, "There's a giant for sale sign." Ah, he said they are open. Like they have like a neon sign. We are open for business. Yeah, they should be. It, uh, yeah, their ro their roster is devoid of talent. Still. They got a they got a really bad bit of luck with how Houston. Played yeah, that year. looked like a strike of genius and still a really great. good trade. Still a really good trade. But not yeah. not the home run. But like, wouldn't you rather just have Will Anderson now than Paris Johnson and the twenty seventh pick? Fair, fair. But I don't At think the they times, were going to take Will. I don't think they were going to take Will Anderson. I think they were going to take the tackle Paris. That's well, Paris that would, Johnson. If they way. did that. The Seahawks would have got Will Anderson. So yeah. Bastards. So uh, I think that I think that this is the pick that gets moved for a quarterback. So do I. Um, Minnesota. Probably Minnesota could be the Chargers. Yeah. Um, then you've got receivers. I mean, it's all pretty much chalk in the first few picks. None of these guys are that surprising. Um, Do they don't have Joe Alt What's that? The show Alt not in there? Or is he? A oh, he went to the Chargers. Yes. Well, what do you think of Latu Latu? Uh, he's one of the guys I don't want. I see. So I think he is a I think he is a very projectable pass rusher. Yeah. I don't so think he's a special athlete and I'm always a little bit concerned at the top of the draft taking a productive pass rusher who is not a elite athlete because once you get in the NFL being a technician can be really good and having pass rushing instincts can be good but that can also mean that you're basically like a uh, six to nine sack kind of rotational guy and not someone who can take over a game. And that's what you want to be taking this high. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So I know some people, like when I put out that tweet today, his name came up a bunch of times. I know some of the Seattle overload guys are really high on him. He's really good. He's good. It's just, he's not the kind of player that would get me that fired up right now. I think. Well, the interesting piece here is that his 
his teammate uh, Murphy has been is set to come on a top thirty visit. Gabe Murphy coming to the top thirty oh, visit yeah. to the Seahawks. Uh, he's a guy in later rounds we've looked at, and I think he tested pretty well. I think he was a four five one forty. I think I saw today. Um, so he's an interesting name to to look at a little bit later. So if Waga goes, I mean, one of these points we'll talk about some of these teams because. Oh, wow, this is an interesting pick. Brian Thomas this early. He's a very controversial receiver. There's some people that are like, this guy's 6'2", 209, something like that, running a 4-3-3. Had shit ton of touchdowns. Like, some people think he... There's some people that have him as, like, the number two or number three receiver, and the other people think he's, like, a second-round pick. Um, Don't think it's going to matter for the Seahawks, although it would be great. The more receivers go ahead of the Seahawks the better. And so now Jeff, we're in this situation that we talked about and it's not just one. It's not even just two. There's th- like three. Where's Byron Murphy? Where, where do they have him ranked? They've got Murphy way right. down here. Um, yeah. You know, um, Johnny Newton's a guy like, a lot of people like uh, you've got all the tackles you could want. Um, Terry and Arnold for a lot of people is the number one corner. Although some people are Kenyon Mitchell guys for me, if it's, if it's Jared verse, I'm turning in the card for Jared verse. You're turning in the card here. You're not trading down. I would be turning in the card. Mm-hmm. What would you be doing in this situation? I would trade down hopefully, but not too far. I would trade down somewhere. Like the problem is the sim is Byron Murphy. You can get like twenty six. I don't. I don't think that's realistic in any scenario. I would be looking to trade down to twenty two. I think for this scenario, like I know All Philly. Right. Philly needs corners. Terry and Arnold sitting there, but listen, Jared Verse. Like I would be very on board with that. He's. I, I think he's awesome. So let's see what the trade offers are. The Rams. This one gives me a lot of discomfort, dude. I I, I, I wouldn't enable that. the Rams. No, I think like if you give but the Rams Jared Verse, oh, it's a pretty pretty good trade. That's a great trade. Yeah, I would probably do that trade. Uh, this trade. I would do that. That's. A trade. I think I like that a little bit better. Yeah, that's the trade I would do. So you get. You get <laughs> one pick later in the first round. One pick earlier in the second round. Um, and you're giving up pick 102 instead of Versus pick 81. 81. I think that's a no brainer. That's a no, that's a great trade. Um, nah. yeah, I, I mean, this, this is interesting in that what you're doing is dropping a 37. Ugh. You're, but you're adding three top 110 picks. It's not what I would do, but no, it's, it's, I can swallow that. That's that's kind of what we talked about last week, where I just like I'm not gonna not gonna fall for that. No, you need quality. So, I think that um, well, me and you, if, like if we want to take first year, I'd be okay. But that trade, there's four guys I'd be very happy taking here. Yeah. So, listening to chat here, uh, we see verse Fautanu Mims, um, I like Mims fair too. one as well, Murphy. Um, Got someone saying that, that this won't happen. I th- I don't th- I think this is a pretty realistic case. I don't think there's anything crazy going on here. No. I... Um, so let's go ahead and we're gonna accept this Pittsburgh trade. So who are they trading up for? Fautanu and Versco. Oh, Verse goes to the Rams. Oh. So that's the thing. I mean, this is really what you those are the two guys for me that were far ahead. But now what you but... got is you got Byron Murphy sitting there. That's that's the you thing. You got Remember, Jackson Powers Johnson, who could play guard. I think he's really a center, but he could play guard. I would take Byron Murphy over him by a long shot. And it's it's interesting. I started seeing more and more drafts with Michael Penix going ahead of the Seahawks pick. At 16. I know there's a, the Raiders are the favorites now in the betting odds, and they're he is. He, I don't know if you notice this, Jeff, but it is people are silent about that guy. It's weird. After it's the combine, weird. it went silent. 
either someone really likes him and they don't want to talk about him or because you figure after the combine the like people might be trying to tear him apart and tear him down we're not hearing a thing yeah yeah i i think he's gonna go a lot higher than people expect and that, that's another that, yeah, that's i think it could happen now there is a guy I want to bring up because a uh, friend of the show, Rob Staten, who's been doing draft stuff for the Seahawks for ages, and man, that guy's a machine. He's writing all the time. He's posting all the time, and his I think latest maybe he's done one since since, but the latest one I saw he had Darius Robinson going to the Seahawks, and. You just had a, a visceral reaction. I was going to tell you a little bit about it, but you, oh, what, was, what was your reaction? Why did you have that reaction? Because he's the kind of guy I can see John Schneider loving. And he's he's not a bad player. Like He just doesn't excite me at all. He's like one of these guys that has such a high like boomer bust rate. And like, he doesn't, have, I don't think he has like the ceiling and his floor. I don't think is that high. But oh, he's like the kind of guy who lit up the senior bowl and has got high character. And he scares me. He scares me. He's got like bad Seahawks draft pick written all over him. I, so I was really intrigued by Darius Robinson um, when, before the combine. I, I like guys that are capable of playing outside and in. I like that he started a defensive tackle. They moved him to edge. He's a bigger dude. And then I saw him move. And the fact of the matter is like from a, from a Raz score perspective, he scored quite high. Like from an athlete perspective, he scored quite high, but you're talking about a guy. I don't know if they've got it in here, but I think he's like high fours in 40. Let me just pull it up. Um, uh, Sam Howell highlights go up. Darius Robinson. Yeah. So Darius Robinson. Do they have his combine numbers? Darius Robinson combine. I think he was like a 4-8. Uh, where? 4 nine, just, five. Where are his numbers? Combine results usually it's four nine five forty yeah 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 there we go so you see his rat score is pretty high he's got super long arms but i'm really troubled by a four nine five forty for a guy that you're talking about primarily as an edge player yeah i, I just doesn't excite me man and you know, he's 285 pounds, so he's a big dude. Like, there's a reason he's like, that's the reason that's a green is because at four nine six five four, you know, 285, 495 is a good 40 time. Um, but he just didn't, the, when I watched him, I just, he didn't seem that sudden to me. And it just didn't pass the eye test for me as far as, far as like a, a impact player. So he's a guy I'm not nearly as high on and I'm not saying Rob's super high on him. I think it's actually a fair thing to say that this, he's, he could be just like you said, a guy, the Seahawks like a lot more than other guys. Um, I hope that's not the case, but could be. So we're yeah. sitting here at 20. Um, I think you and I were like Byron Murphy here. Right? Uh, yeah. For me, like that's why I made the trade. Cause there's, three or four guys that I would comfortable taking at 60 and that we can get 20 and then add that second round pick. Yeah. So I think we'll do that. I will say, I mean, I really do believe safety is an important position to be thinking about. I struggle with the idea of drafting small here. Like yeah, me too. This team just needs to get bigger and they tougher. did it last year. It didn't work. And we, we no more like receivers early, small edge players early, like power strength. That's what they need. And so let's go ahead and take Mr. Murphy. 
And we see as this this moves on. A lot by, of interesting names now. So let's kind of talk about for people that are listening um, what happens after that. So you see Bo Nix goes to Minnesota at 23. That means did Penix go in the first? No, he goes in the second it's here. It's the Raiders. So that's that's a good Raiders. Mom. So like you just have a ton of um ton of quarterbacks going. Um Barton. interesting here with uh Sumataya. Hmm. Uh, going in the first round here is a guy that that I have been interested in because he can play guard. Um, did not think he's a first rounder, but but interesting seeing him. Cam Kitchens goes very early here. Wow, they've got Johnny Newton uh, going in the second round. That wouldn't surprise me. I think I'm the lowest either. on Johnny Newton of anybody. Yeah, you're. I don't think that would surprise me either. He didn't really work out. He's uh, Mr. Witherspoon, Devin Witherspoon's a big fan. Did yeah, you see well, that I did. They they were teammates in college. Uh, he would know him infinitely. Yes, I I just see a high effort guy with some good athleticism who will be a productive rotational player. I don't see I don't see a Pro Bowl dominant player in newton yeah i think murphy has the potential to be i think tavondre sweat and murphy both have higher potential to be dominant players than newton maybe i'll end up looking like an absolute ass when this all comes but that's how i see them is matabuke like who's your comparison for murphy like what kind of player do you see there i think that's a pretty good compare what i really like about murphy is he's a twitched up 300 plus pound guy it's so rare. He moves like he's got a great burst. And I don't think he actually was able to display his full repertoire at Texas the way that they played him. If they played like a three, three, five or something like that. And and so I don't know that we saw his full three tech capabilities. And if they really unleashed him as a penetrator, what he'd be able to do. And he's good against the run as well. So like I just. There's something about him and his athletic profile plus his productivity in the game against Washington in the semifinals. Tavondre Sweat was having a lot of trouble staying on the field because he's, he's just a big dude, but was not making a big impact. Byron Murphy was constantly creating issues, and that's going against Fautanu. That's going against the number one offensive line in the in, in college football. So I don't know. I just he really made an impression on me, and and uh, yeah, I think he's he's got tons of potential. Um, Lad McConkey. I mean, this is the type of guy I'm talking about, Jeff. Second round. Yeah, this guy would have been probably a first round receiver last year. Yeah, for sure. He's he's solid. He, he's, he's. I think I, I, even some of these guys were talking. Darius Robinson. They've got him going. Like he's a cl- he's a second round pick. I think he's a a, a yeah. wise second round pick. Not like he's the kind of guy like. In like the Seahawks would have traded down three times, end up in the second round, and just pick him. That was like yeah. the John Snyder 2017 draft. Yes, yes. Interesting. Braylon Trice is a guy that he did not have a good combine, and he's been he was for a while he was a solid first rounder in most mocks. He is now I'm not seeing him in the first round of any mocks. Yeah, it's crazy. I was listening to a podcast uh, with it was actually Matt Miller, and they was talking about like the most pro ready guys. And, they were saying, like, going into the combine, like, they would have had Braylon Trice. And he just, like, kind of bombed it. And now he, he might go in the third round. Him and He and Latu, to me, are very similar players. Similar size. I think Latu might be a little bit bigger. Let me double check that. Um, uh, 259, 6'4", versus, yeah, 245. Yeah, almost identical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Christian Haynes, another guard prospect, goes to the Packers at 41. Tyler Newbin has had a awful – he had an awful pro day. His numbers have been really bad, and he's been plummeting yeah. down the boards um, from an athletic profile perspective. But they have him going in the second round to the Patriots, to Vondre Sweat. This might be the best simulated mock draft I've seen so far, just in terms of like player and team fit. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is why people like this this sim. This so, one might uh, be the best one I've seen of anyone we've done so far. Yeah, I'm curious. We'll we'll, we'll keep going through. Uh, I know I'm taking a little bit of time here, but but going. Want to welcome uh, Noah Noah Berman, a new member on YouTube. Thank you for the support, Noah. Absolutely appreciate it. Um, Tavondre Sweat going here. That's about where I think he's going to go. I don't think you're going to get him at the end of the second round where he had been somewhere for a while. Michael Penix goes to the Raiders. Uh, Rook uh, Aroaro, who a lot of folks I think have mocked to the Seahawks in the third round, um, goes here in the second. He had some remarkable pro, like combine numbers. Uh, Troy Franklin goes to the to the Jags. Jalen Polk goes to the Bengals. And Edrian Cooper, so one of the linebackers, goes to the Eagles right before the Seahawks pick at 51. Now, here we go, dude. This is this is not PFF where you can get Cooper BB in the fourth round or whatever. Ridiculous. This is where I, th I think they have BB stock yes. much more. But Leonard Taylor's a guy I think is going to go in like the fourth round. I don't know. Leonard Taylor's – I do not like that guy. I, I think he's going to go closer to the fourth round. Than... Just not that interested. But, yes, he he's – some people like him. Um, I know Nathan liked him for a while. Braswell's a guy we have not talked about. He was opposite of, of um, yeah. And, uh, I think he's an interesting dude, uh, productive edge rusher. I don't know, don't know if you can justify taking him here. Like you can't take yeah. for the third year in a row another two hundred fifty pound edge rusher. No, they 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 just have numbers there. And to me, this is the interior offensive line. This has to be the guard. I think BB feels like a, a logical one. It's almost too logical. Yeah. Um, Where do they have uh, G the linebackers? Chris Jenkins. So they've got Peyton Wilson down here at 65. Rob was also saying the Seahawks are going to like Fisky if they don't get a DT in the first round. But I don't, I don't agree with that. We should have yeah. Rob on. We'll talk about it. I, Fisky, so Fisky's like 285. Well, he, they have him as 292 here. Absolute ridiculous athlete. So he's no common. questions there. But I think he's too light for for Mike McDonald's offense for defense the defensive line. His defensive line is like 300 plus guys. And that's if they want to build a run wall. He doesn't really fit. He's to the penetrating. Uh, yeah, we'll find out together. But I don't think he's. I don't think he fits their profile. I like. Uh, this also has Cedric Gray higher. I mean, he's been going in like the fourth or the fifth round of the PFF, but they've got Junior Colson, Colson all the way down there at 74. Um, you know, this is the thing, Jeff. Yeah, I think you take Cooper BB, be... he's a starting caliber dude. I think that's your left guard for a long time. I think this is I'm not, be like I'm I like Cooper BB. I don't think he's an all pro pro bowl type guy. I think he is. No, a, he's solid. He's a yeah. competent starter. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And so for me, I am much Colson. more concerned about losing a guy like Junior Colson. Yeah, than I am because you're not going to get. I mean, I think especially like if you could. The way the Seahawks do it too, like if you look at who the linebackers are going to be in the third round versus who the guards are going to be in the third round, I think the linebacker numbers are going to get real low fast. So I'm with you on that one. Like I'd be far more upset if you lost Junior Colson than if you lost BB. So Noah Berman, our new member, says, wonder where they have uh, Trevin Wallace. Do you know uh, Wallace? Trevin Wallace. I don't know Wallace. Let's see if we can scroll down here. He's not anywhere close um, in this list. So, um, yeah, I think I would take Junior Colson here. That's that's I think what I would do as well. I just feel like you end up. I think like he has Miller's a higher gone, potential to be a blue chip player than Cooper Beebe. Yeah, Miller's got him ranked forty sixth overall. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just I really like this kid. I mean, that's no surprise to anyone that's been watching. We, we, we try to get him almost every time. And here's the thing. like The Seahawks spent – there was a lot of chatter on Twitter. Like, the Seahawks spent a 
more cap hits on their one-year linebackers than Jordan Brooks, who's making $10 million next year on the cap hit. But they have two guys on one-year deals. They need a long-term linebacker. They don't want to go in, essentially do what they did this year. They need someone. Obviously, you're hoping Dodson. and But if you have Dodson, Baker, and Junior Colson, that group looks really good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Also worth noting, so we're, we're now, we took Junior Colson there. So we've got Byron Murphy and Junior Colson. We've done defense, which, like, free agency has mostly been defense. Draft the first two picks or defense. I think this is where it flips. I think it's got to start flipping. Um, our tight end worth calling out here. Some guys that we've talked about. Um, Michael Hall Jr. goes to the Cardinals at 70. Um, Jalen McMillan goes to the Jets at 72. Cedric Van Pran, uh, who you've talked about, goes at 74 to the Falcons. Christian Mahogany, who a lot of folks have you know, going pretty high. I feel like he's a little stiff for my taste, but he goes 75 as a guard um, to the bears. Ben Sinat, uh, the kind of H back tight end um, goes to the Raiders at 77. Roger Rosengarten, who again is is available way too late in the PFF. Yeah. I think this is his range goes at 78. Uh, And then tight end Jatavian, Jatavian Sanders, from Texas goes to the Bengals at 80. Seahawks are on the clock at 81 after the trade. Ooh, Chris Jenkins. Chris Jenkins, Ricky Pearsall. Um, those are hard names to pass up, dude. I know. Ricky Pearsall is a really interesting guy. I, I, I'm i very high on Pearsall. Yeah, I was going to say, like, that – I know Nathan's made the argument against us taking the third-round receiver, but – that really gives you a nice transition plan to Tyler Lockett. And that's an area where we've talked about like their cap management. They're constantly filling in stop gaps. These are the kind of things they need to be looking at so they can use their cap room more efficiently. But we did lose BB over this thing. But man, if they're going to go with the highest player on their board, I think Ricky Pearsall would be really hard to pass at this point. I've seen Zach Zinter going as high as the second round in some mock. You sent that out the other day. I I don't think he's going to go that high, but I think he's coming off a broken leg. I think he has more talent than Cooper Beebe. Yeah, I think he's got a higher upside. That's why for me, I'm okay if you get him in a third round or a fourth round. Yeah, him and McCormick are really interesting guys here. Yeah. Um. So, jeez, Fisky. This is this, this is tough, dude. I mean, I think you 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 can't take another defensive guy. No, I think you got to flip to offense unless there's just a guy you love. Um, this is why we took linebacker. I know there's Trevin Wallace. We got asked about Trotter. Like it falls off a cliff. Yeah, and and Trotter, I just uh, he is. 228 yeah, he's, super he's light big. dude he's almost a safety yeah and if you want to build a big physical team i don't think he helps so i think jeff um i think we end up we agree that we go to Pearsall here i think i would i think that you can get the guard in the fourth round i think you gamble on that let's see if there's any trade offers that are like particularly appealing no Not going back that far. So let's take Pearsall. I think that guy is a, I mean, amazing athlete and a great potential uh, replacement for Tyler Lockett next year. Um, So now you have a receiver that you didn't necessarily need to prioritize, but you took him. Now you pretty much, you got to look, be starting to hunt for those guards. Yeah. Um, Zinter's there. If you want him, you probably have to take him here. I think you have to take him here. Right. None of I take, I'm with you. Let's go ahead and do that. So next up, I think you start thinking about tight end. end. Where's our fifth rounder? Safety. Did we trade our fifth rounder? We did as part of oh, that, yeah. I think as part of that pick. Yeah. Uh, that trade that initial trade. 
So Jaheim Bell is an interesting guy. We haven't talked as much about him, but he's a, he's a moving tight end. Mm. I wouldn't I wouldn't hate that pick here. Who are the other tight ends they have on the board? Um, let's look at the other tight ends here. So Tip Ryman's still available. They got him available late. I, I yeah, I think he's going him or AJ Barner late. Neither one of those guys are movement tight ends, though. No, I really like Tip Ryman though. Um. Safety, maybe you could go safety, you could go one. edge. ZTF's interesting, he's been creeping up some boards. Um, you could go quarterback. Brennan Jackson's an interesting edge. Um, he's a guy that I, I would be pretty happy with at this stage, yeah. Like, that's the kind of risk you should be taking. So John said in his mock in this interview the other day, I actually really like Dylan McMahon too. He had really good. He, he I think he's a center. It, he I don't know really much about the guy. He's got a crazy score. He had a crazy combine. He's a really good movement player. I know Josh Norris of uh, the underdog does a thing on metrics of like, there's five metrics and like all the people that hit those metrics have become like successful NFL players and Dylan McMahon hit it. I know Abe Lucas, he was high on Abe Lucas for hitting these metrics. But he's like a really good movement. He had really good combine numbers. So he is 6'3", 300 pounds. Pretty short arms, though. Yeah. 30, under 32-inch arms. Um, Maybe at center, it's not as big of a deal. Um, But certainly has has some good explosive numbers here. So center only they see him as apparently. Yeah, I don't see him as a guard. What? Um. Yeah, I like Ula uh, Foscio as as well as another guard, pro- another linebacker project. Uh, Lumea from Utah is a guard. Remember, prospect. we pick again at one ninety two. So. Oh yeah, do we have where are we at right now? So we're one seventy nine. So we have we're up again in twelve picks. So. Some of those tight ends are going to be there in the next. I think the edge spot makes a ton of sense. This is where they. Sh- so what do we want to do? You want to go ZTF? You want to go um, Brennan I Jackson? Like the, I think I like Brennan Jackson. Yeah, I do too. Let's take Brennan Jackson. I think this is where we take the tight end. Look at the gap we have now. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, uh, Lamea is a guy you could double up at guard. You could take yeah. another linebacker, but this is where you could start taking tight end. Um, I, think, I think Barner or Tip Ryman. You and I love Tip Ryman. Let's go ahead and find Tip Ryman way down this list. There he is. Let's just take him. Take him off the list. Yeah, John Schneider said the other day, the sixth and seventh round is where you go for need. All right. So this final pick. Um, <clears throat> wow, Jordan Winnington at receiver is a pretty good value this late. Mm-hmm. No, Brivens Band Ford, a tight end from Minnesota, 6'6, 260. It's not a very good athletic. Uh... Not a good ath- athletic score. Um you could go safety. You haven't Yeah, we haven't touched safety. Yet. Uh Sam Herman. Oh, well, we're gonna draft a quarterback. Could draft a quarterback. Any of these guys that we're scrolling through here get your attention, Jeff? <laughs> not really. <laughs> no. Probably All right. Trade. So we're not gonna spend too much time on this. Uh, let's maybe a safety here. Sure, we'll take Ryan Watts. Don't know who he is, but we'll take yeah, Ryan. Yeah, he's Watts. probably not gonna be team. All right. So that's. That was a fun. That was a fun little exercise. So, yeah, I we think, end up with Byron Murphy, Junior Colson, Ricky Pearsall, Zach Zinter, Brennan Jackson, Tip Ryman, and Ryan Watts. How do you feel about that? That's an A draft for me. It's an A for you. Yeah. Wicked Garden uh, on chat gives us a C minus. C minus. C minus, dude. He's a hater. He hates this draft. I think if you get Byron Murphy at 20 or you're already at B at the latest, no matter what you do the rest of the draft. Uh, he, he says that we 
overvalue off ball linebackers way too much. And we don't have an interior offensive line. You know what? We don't have an interior offensive line. And guess what? You cannot fix that in the draft. You, you can, you can spend your first round pick on that and help a ton, but the reason that that's such an issue is because they didn't prioritize it in free agency. So you have Anthony Bradford is your starting right guard. Olu Oluwatimi is your starting center. And so now you are you're looking for a left guard. And they might think that Raekwon O'Neal is their left guard. They might think that this guy that they signed from the Rams is uh, whatever. So they will draft a they will draft a guard. But if you have an issue with over prioritizing off ball linebackers and undervaluing interior offensive line, that is a John Schneider issue. John Schneider has drafted off ball linebackers in the second round or first round multiple times. He has almost never drafted an interior lineman before the third round, before the fourth round. Yeah, Damian Lewis went in the third round. I think that's the highest they ever taken. Yeah, and everyone, like, even Bob Condota got this wrong in the Seattle Times this morning. I would have told Bob, but he gets very persnickety when, when you let him know if there's a mistake, even if you do it privately. He said that James Carpenter was only a guard, that he was drafted in the first round. That's not true. He, he, was drafted he started right out as a right tackle. Yeah. Yeah, they drafted so, him to play right tackle, and he couldn't do it. Yeah. Then they found Breno. So this is an A draft for you. Um, I'm curious what uh, other folks that are – we've got a B from, from Tuck Tuck. I think a B is fair. I just think for me, Byron Murphy alone. And then you get Colson Zinter and then Pearsall, who I think could be really good. I think this is a B solid B-plus draft for me. Like pushing A- minus with a chance to be an A. Like it, you wouldn't know until you get to see these guys, but I love Zach Zinner in the 4th round. I love that pick. Yeah, he's got he's got pro bowl upside. I really like Brennan Jackson late. I think Tip Ryman is exactly the kind of tight end that they should be looking for late in this draft. I don't care if it's him or AJ Barner, like any of those kind of guys, but Ryman I think has some Will Disley upside to him. And Pearsall's a guy that like people are like, what the hell are you doing? This guy is a freaky athlete, made the most amazing catch you'll ever see last year. Um, and I think can just be lights out um, as a second or third receiver. And you get him in the third round. I think that he is a second round talent and you're getting him in the third round. I think it would have been a bigger issue, Jeff, to have not drafted him. And the, thing, and the thing with their team building, and I think we need they need to get better at this, is we're constantly looking at like, okay, how much cap room do they have? How much cap room do they have? And then the next year, they're just trying to fix the problems from the previous year. They, they created by creating the cap room. I know Bob Condota put out a thing yesterday, which I didn't really agree with. They said... Well, he, it's, a, it's a fact. He said they have like the least cap room available. They're in the bottom five for like cap room available next year. But their cap room is very flexible, and they have the ability to create a lot of cap room. But one of the things that we that they do caught, they did this year, they had fifty million of cap room, but they had to fill a lot of positions. One of the clear levers of cap room is Tyler Lockett's probably going to get cut after this year. Yep. And if you create that room, and then you have to replace them. And you might sign a stopgap or you might spend a draft pick. It's not ideal. But if you can do this a year early, and this is what the Ravens do really well. Like last year they drafted Trenton Simpson knowing that Patrick Queen was a free agent they probably couldn't sign. Instead of having to go into free agency and paying for Jerome Baker, they have Trent Simpson on a rookie contract. They slide him in. They lost John Simpson. They have um, they had the guy that you liked last year for he's They have him. He's their new left guard. If you get Pearsall now, yeah, maybe it's not ideal this year, but next you're trying to look beyond one year, and all of a sudden next year you have JSN, DK, and Pearsall, and you don't have to spend that cap room trying to find that replacement for Lockett. That 
is really and it also hedges you if there's an injury this year. So well, that's, that's cool. the part that nobody wants to talk about. Uh, if you haven't realized, Tyler Lockett is probably in his last year and has missed some games. JSN, as much as we love him, has a pretty significant injury history in college football, and he was injured when he came in, like for the pros. He missed some games. Yeah. So if one of those guys goes down, everyone's like, I love Jake Bobo. He's a fun story. Jake Bobo has not proven to be a difference-making player. He does not have the athletic profile of a guy like Pearsall. If you can add somebody who is a threat to the defense, then it helps everybody else. So uh, there's just no doubt to me that, that, that that's – I don't lose any sleep over that pick. He's one of my favorite players in this draft. Um, that's why I gave it an A. I, I think he's a second-round pick. You get him an 81. But the interesting thing here, Jeff, we're going to do one more. You don't have to stay on. I know it's getting late for you, but if you want to, we're going to do one more. Um, to the point about, hey, we're overvaluing off-ball linebacker and undervaluing interior offensive line. First of all, that is a hysterical comment for us. Uh, you know, <laughs> followed, followed this show. But let's say that you drafted Cooper Beebe at 51, like we had the chance to. You are talking about Jeremiah Trotter as your linebacker or worse. There is nobody after him. There is nobody after him at linebacker. Like last year, like there was a Dorian Williams, you know, pick in the fifth round. You could probably make that. I liked, I was like Dorian Williams. This is a guy I can see being a, a, a difference making linebacker. And guess what? He played decently for the bills. He got snaps for them. I don't see that guy in this draft. Doesn't mean he doesn't exist, but I just don't see the athletic profile of a linebacker, an off-ball linebacker later. So you're basically saying you are you got Baker and Dodson, and God forbid one of them gets injured, but then they're all both on one-year deals, dude. That's the thing, and I talked about it earlier. They have to start planning a year out, and they didn't do it last year. They. Tight end and linebacker are positions that all of their starters, and then Disley, we knew he was going to get cut based on that contract. They had two full position groups of guys that were unsigned beyond one season. And that's why we really added, me and you advocate for tight end draft picks last year. And that was a really good tight end draft class. And Darnell Washington would have been a starting tight end for them this year. And maybe they don't sign Farrell Brown because they have a similar profile. Um, we could have traded Noah Fan last year. Um, this is what they've done poorly, and I think linebacker is a spot where you can't go into next year again with nothing on your roster sign. And then it helps you too because you have a rookie contract at that spot, and McDonald's defense really values the linebacker position. So I don't see how you can say we're overvaluing the linebacker position when, A, the coach has just had a ton of success with that spot, and we know it falls off a cliff. Yeah, The whole thing is about cliffs and drafts. So there's no there's no way you can say we're overvalued the linebacker position. Yeah, I I I just think that um, the Seahawks have backed themselves into a corner. That is my biggest criticism about the roster construction, the way they've approached it, is they really have to draft a starting guard. I think they really have to draft a starting um, linebacker, someone who could be getting significant linebacker snaps. This is a fine draft on the offensive line to do that. It is not a fine draft on the linebacker. So they're, they're in a bit of a pickle there and they, they don't have a second round pick. <laughs> so as of now, I don't think they have a great chance of getting that linebacker. Um, all right, let's do one more here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll stick with this sim. We both. Yeah. I really like that sim. Uh, that was the best team need value sim I've seen since we've been doing these. Yeah, I agreed. That was good. Um, so let's I hate all these ads though. It's just yeah, ugly. Fun. It is an ugly experience. So as a product guy, not fun. All right, let's um let's quickly for people that are on listening and not following. Uh Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May is the order here. Marvin Harrison, Joe Alt, JJ McCarthy goes to the Giants in this one. Fashanu goes to the Titans. Um Odunze goes oh, to the Falcons. Jackson. Brock Bowers goes to the 
uh, Bears, Malik Neighbors goes to the Jets, Terry and Arnold to the Jags, Kenyon Mitchell to the Broncos, Marius Mims, very high, to the Raiders, Fuaga goes to the Saints, and then Dallas Turner, who, by the way, has been falling down some draft boards and could be a name that the Seahawks have to think about, um, goes right before them to the, the Colts. And so now you've got a couple of edges. You've got Latu, you've got Verse, you've got Fautanu, um, you've got Byron Murphy. Uh, we want to, do we want to, how do we want to approach this? Do we want to make a theme for this draft? Do we want to do the we, same thing, but prioritize offensive line and see how it feels? We could do that, or we can just take verse like you want to initially. Let's see what trade offers we've got. Well, that's that. Oh, I don't know if I want to give up 81. No, I don't want to give up 81. Um, 36 and 40. See, uh, it's a great trade, but I just feel like they, they need quality. I don't think, I don't think that gives you enough quality. Yeah. Uh, that's appealing though. Um, no, no <laughs> the 49ers offer the 30. I'm not giving the 49ers. 63rd, 94th. Um, great offer, but no, I'm not doing that. Okay. All right. So I'm not giving San Francisco a top 15 player. So let's do this. Let's um, do we look at Philly this time? Like Philly's been the the Rams. Let's let's take a look at Philly and let's go for 22 and 53 and give them 16. Um, I'm sure this will be rejected, but let's just take a look. Okay. So So let's try one more time. See, this is a little bit. Annoying. Um, yeah, their 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 interface needs some work on trades. So we'll do sixteen for twenty two fifty three, and we will include. Uh, one eighteen, if we do. I don't doubt one eighteen will do it. All right, let's try one two. Two. That's rejected too. Really? All right, let's let's do this. We're going to prioritize offensive line. We're going to go the offense. We'll take Fautanu, and we'll see how this plays out. Now, this one, we don't get a second-round pick is the way this is playing out. Yeah. Double-check here. Well, we could do that trade. Maybe we should. Okay, so let's do this trade. Let's Let's do this. Let's let's counter. Let's see if we can do it for 102. And just take out their future second-rounder. Let's just, well, we'll do this for a second. Uh, Okay, I'll take out the future second. Trade offer, counter. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see if that goes through. Okay. Okay. All right. So oh, well, that would be interesting. So we gave up verse, verse to the Rams. The Rams traded up. Like, gave the Rams, up verse. Hold on. How did the Rams, the Cowboys traded up and then traded down? <laughs> I don't know. I've ever seen that before. <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> That's the wildest thing I've ever seen. I, I like so we said really... we we're going to prioritize offensive line. We could take Graham Barton here. Ooh, Penix. Um, I don't think there's anyone else worthy of it. And our next pick is at 56. So we could take Murphy um, yeah. and then take offensive line with our second pick. We took take Barton and then look at linebacker with our second pick. Um, what do you think? Like I would want Murphy, but I feel like we're, you're not getting up 24. I feel like it's a foolish exercise. Yeah, it feels a little bit unrealistic. Um, I think Chop Robinson is an, is a realistic possibility here. It's yeah. An interesting name. I think Barton would be. I think if we're going to try to go with that interior offensive line. All right, let's do that. Like Barton to... seems like a pretty sure thing. Yeah, everyone's like, a lot of people are like, take Penix. And I'm like, yeah, I mean. I would take Penix here. We could try that. We could, if, if we end up doing a third, which we might, we'll. we'll, we'll we probably will. I'm... But um, let's go ahead and, and take Barton just to see how that feels. Run through this. There, BB went, by the way. So we weren't going to even get BB in this option. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's where BB goes. Christian Hayes is already gone. So, like, and this Ooh, oh and Penix is sitting there. Well, we gotta take it. Or do you take Chris Jenkins here? 
I mean, that is a fascinating. I mean, you've taken your offensive guard. I think you got to take him, don't you? Oh, yeah, you have to. You got to. You got to. Like he, if they took him at 16, I wouldn't even be upset. Okay, so we're taking Michael Penn. Well, I got to see. There's no trade offers, which is wild. Which is wild. Um, all right, we're going to take Michael Penix. So this looked a lot different. And then an 81. Now Michael Hall's there. See, that's interesting. I I would be very – I'd run up and give the card at Michael Hall in the third round. Yeah. Got, like, he's Hall a again. freak athlete. You got Mahogany, but you already got your guard. Um, I like the Michael top. Hall in the third a lot more than I like Johnny Newton in the first because I think they're similar players, and I think yeah. Hall, for whatever reason, is just valued less. Well, look, he's a 56th or 58th ranked guy. Like, I would turn that card in fast. Yeah. Like, he apparently lit up his pro day the other day. All right, so we're going to take Michael Hall. I mean, I, the draft is falling in an interesting way for the Seahawks. Yeah, this is definitely different than I thought it would be. No. I refuse to trade with them. Uh, Mason McCormick's gone ahead there. Um, Mason so we, Smith is a guy we haven't talked about. I actually really like him quite a bit as well. Yeah. He's, he's a guy that, you know, freak athlete um, and then came back from injury. And so I think this guy's got a lot of upside and could go lower than he should. Um, but you just took a defensive tackle. Who do should we double up on? There's your guy Mustafa at safety. He can hit, but Theo Johnson at tight end. We have a big Brandon gap. Rice here. at receiver. So let's remember we have we have a big gap. One eighteen to one seventy nine. Oh yeah. So we gotta think. Do we want to look at the trade offers here? Yeah, I think this is. That's actually a pretty good offer. <laughs> you move back six spots and get another pick. I think I would do that. <laughs> All right, let's let's take it from the 49ers. I hate. Yeah, we get a long jump. We did it. So who do we lose? Well, there goes we Mason, Mason Smith, though. Lost Mason, Mason Smith. And none of the other guys I care that much about. So we could take like a Mustafa or a tight end here. We could. Um, or receiver. Peter Johnson there, would be interesting. There's Brendan Rice. Brendan Rice. Uh, Taylor Bar- leading had a really interesting combine. Oh, you know another guy that we haven't talked about as much? I like this Gonclave guy. Have you looked at him at all? No, but he's a, he's a tackle, right? He's a guard. So he's a he's, he's a, guard. a tackle guard. He, he uh he's a guy I've been watching a little bit more, and I think is an interesting fallback option. Yeah, um, like so hard not to take Zinter every time. But oh, Zinter. Yeah, like how do you not take Zinter? <laughs> yeah, right. Why not? Like we said then we're gonna prioritize Barton offensive and line. Zinter. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get Barton and Zinter. Let's do it. I'm I'm with you, dude. I'm with you. Um, now now we're gonna have a couple picks in the one seventies. But we can get tight end safety. Right. So we got two of the next four picks. Um Ooh, Eric, Eric All. There's that guy. Yeah, that's a guy that, that Nathan likes quite a bit. Yeah. Um I think Christian Boyd's an interesting D tackle, but don't need him. Isaac Garendo's this like freak. I know he's a running back, but I wonder if there's any return game to him because he, I mean, he has just a freak athletic score. And we got that extra pick here. You can kind of take a chance like that. Right. Um, there's Brendan Jackson again. Yeah. Um, but like, Ufoshio, do we, we haven't taken a linebacker, have we? No, we haven't. So this is where – is there anyone left? I don't think so. Yeah. So, like – Anyone, anyone jump off like Eichenberg? I'm just not an Eichenberg guy. No. Um, he's just not, he's just not a great athlete. No. Seems like a backup special teams guy. Yeah. Maris, um, same thing. Mohamed Kamara is an interesting. I don't know Kamara. What, 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 what do you like about him? He's just, he's really quick. But again, I don't know if like they don't think they need him. I think tight end or linebacker or safety or edge. Makes... We're gonna take Brennan Jackson again because I just I like that pick. Yeah, and we're up again three picks. So we're gonna pick again in four 
picks. Um, I think this is where we got to take tight end. We got to take tight end. I think we could probably still get we we could take linebackers. We could take Ulu Foshio. Yeah, take Ulu Foshio there. And do we have you know pick it at one ninety two? We'll just take a tight end there. Let's see how that how that plays out. Um. All right, tight end. So we just got to hope that Eric All does not become George Kittle. <laughs> There's AJ Barner. I mean, I I'm think okay AJ Barner him. here would be. I think AJ Barner here or Ryman would be sweet. Yeah, I don't know if Tip Ryman. Yeah, Tip Ryman's still there. So you want you want Barner, Barner or Ryman? Let's go with Barner this one. Let's flip it around. See, let's do a, mix it up a little bit. All right, so we're gonna take AJ Barner. Let's just check size wise. So he's six six two fifty one. Um, Ryman, who I just don't think he's gonna be available this late. Yeah, he's he's yeah, twenty big. pounds heavier. Yeah. Okay. Let's take Ryman. All right. He's our Darnell Washington. <laughs> you and I love the big boy. They should have taken Darnell Washington, man. Yeah, that would have been fun. Um, and then Again, here we are. We're having trouble fitting safety in both these. Yeah, uh, and I just don't. I don't know a lot of the safeties this late. Okay, there's Gabe Murphy. Gabe Murphy. So let's take him. Let's take him. Yeah, they've been they've been connected to him. So let's take Gabe Murphy. Got a couple edges. I think more than they were realistically take. All right. So this draft looks really different. It looks Very a lot different. Time. It yeah. looks a lot different. So uh, interested to hear from chat where your grades are for this one. For folks that are listening along and not watching, it is Graham Barton at the 24th pick. For people that aren't familiar with Graham Barton, he has played left tackle, but he's considered a guy that can play all five positions. Most people think his best position would be center, but there's folks that have him as the best interior offensive lineman in this draft, depending on who you follow. So the Seahawks add him at the 24th pick. And then with the second round pick at 56 that we traded back and got, Michael Penix Jr. falls to them. I don't I don't know if I believe that there's any way this will happen, but no, if it no. does, I think that's the right pick, man. Right? So you get Michael Penix, then you go Michael Hall Jr. in your third round pick at 81. Really disruptive defensive tackle from Ohio State. Then you get Zach Zinter coming off major injury who can play guard. Then you get Brennan Jackson and Edge from Washington State. Couple picks later, you get Edufuanu Ulofoshio, linebacker from Washington. 192, you get Tip Ryman from Illinois. And then final pick, 235, you get another edge, Gabriel Murphy, who is going to the Seahawks for a top 30 visit. A um, lot of folks like this draft. Uh, it, it, it is a, a little polarizing. So, you know, we've got a minus. Uh, any draft that has Penix is an A, uh, would be A plus with Barton, Penix, Hall, Penix at 56 makes an A plus. We've got a B plus. We've got a C, A minus. Um, <laughs> someone says Penix kills this draft for me, so not as excited. Um, and then uh, Jackson Shore asked, what's the hype with Ryman? Can we take a second on that, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So... If you saw Tip Ryman at the com I fell in love with him at the combine. Admittedly, had not he heard of awesome. him before the combine. I watched this guy, and I was watching people move. I just watch how people move. Primarily, is what I look at in the in the combine. And this is a guy. He's like big country boy, two hundred and seventy plus pounds, huge dude, six five. And he gets up there and he runs the 40 in four, six, four. He With ran the 40 split. times that like guys, 20 pounds lighter were not doing. Here's actually a video of him doing it, um, which I think is going to actually make this uh, uh, pod not uh, yeah, we make a right problems. But look at this guy move. That guy's 270. Yeah, it's crazy. He like that's. That is an explosive athlete, dude. That's an explosive athlete who just might not have been used that way, but he also is tough and a blocker. That's like that's our kind of guy. So if you're if you're asking me if I could get a tip rhyme, if I could get 
Cade Stover. Like, what's is, is Cade Stover the name of the guy? I can't remember the the Ohio tight State. end. From Ohio State, right? He he's probably a fourth round, maybe a third round pick, much higher, you know, uh, thought of prospect. If I get him in the third round versus, or even the fourth round versus Ryman in the sixth round, no brainer. You could slide Ryman in. He'll be a good blocker, if nothing else. And then he could end up becoming more than that, which would be cool. Um, so how do you feel about this draft, dude? How do you feel about this compared to the, the last draft? Like the Penix thing is such a wild card. And like, it would be so f- exciting to get Penix. I, I don't think there's any chance he falls to 56. So, but I, I liked what, I love what we did. I think especially the first four picks. I like the other draft better, and I don't think the group did. But obviously, I, I love like I love the interior offensive line pick. But if we don't get panics there again, I feel like we're missing the quality. And again, this is a team that doesn't have a lot of blue chip talent, and I can't. This is a good draft, but to me. It's looking like a lot of solid players, which is again a good thing. But I want a blue chip talent, and I think passing all those guys who could be blue chippers at first, and Murphy become and they hit. I think this would be a draft where we'd sit back, and if they don't, if, if Penix doesn't hit, I think we'd sit back and say this was fine. But they're missing that stud, and I think I want to chase that stud. Yeah. I think part of it, it's it's that first pick. And Graham Barton, no matter what people say, a guy that played for Duke <laughs> as your first pick, it's hard to get behind. I, I'm sorry. It's just it's hard not basketball. Get, yeah. it's Exactly. It's not basketball. So I think this is a really smart draft. Yeah, I'm not saying that to pat myself ourselves on the back. I like. I think it's a, the picks were smart. I think that you could have you probably really raised the the bar of your your roster with this draft. You didn't go after need too heavily. You just kind of filled in, and and the draft fell to you. And I think in a pretty good way. Yeah, like this reminds me of like what the Steelers did last year. Like it was a good draft, but or even what brought... the Seahawks have done. You know, yeah, and like you look at the Steelers, they had a really draft like this last year. They didn't raise their ceiling. They raised their floor. That's what reminds of this draft a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really well said. We're going to do one more. We're going to do it much quicker. And this one, we are not going to trade back, Jeff. Yeah. We're going to pick and pick. All right. And we're going to see how we feel about this one. This will be the final draft of the night. Do seven rounds. We'll do fast. We'll pick the Seahawks. And here we go. It's gonna be a long month. So no, get away, Pittsburgh. Interesting. So, verse Almost and all of go. our guys are gone, dude. <laughs> Clear start. This is devastating. This is a good. This is like someone said we should do a worst case scenario. This might be it. Well, Alice well, Turner the is gone. Uh. Mm-hmm. Fuaga is gone. Verse is, is gone. Fautanu is gone. Bowers is gone. Every single one of our guys. By Byron Murphy still there. Byron dude. Murphy in this and this is still there. Like he would be my guy here. If... I think that's what you got to do. Now yeah. you could go Jackson Powers Johnson. A lot of people you like could. him. You could. But I think you and I are Murphy. Yeah, I'm Murphy. I would be. I would run up there with Murphy in the card. So, and I think if it goes verse Fountanu Bowers, I'm. That yeah. would hurt. It could happen. This, this it, could happen. This it could like totally Falcons, happen. Falcons and Verse have been linked. Fountanu and the Saints have been linked. And the thing is, of the guys left here, maybe Quinion Mitchell. But I don't know that any of these are guys that anyone would be like eager to trade up to get. No, like I'm not even Latham. sure you could trade back much. Yeah, like Latham's a guy some people really like. Mims is a guy that I know there's like Mims has a ton of upside, but he's raw, man. He is. So, so let's, yeah. Let's take our boy. I think we Byron Murphy. We're gonna have to wait all the way to 81. We're not gonna pretend that we're gonna trade yeah, this up. Part, I just, this part would hurt so much. It hurts, man. 
one of my Your guys sweat. in this draft is Devondre Sweat, and just watching him go by in the second round every yeah, time. We didn't do any draft with Sweat, but Junior so Colson's we, there. Junior Colson. So easy pick, right? Yeah, well, it's going to look like a lot like our first draft, but well, with one last pick in the first three. Okay, so we're not doing. This That's draft. insane. Um. Ooh, Dominic Puny. Uh, yeah, we haven't taken our guard yet, right? Mason Smith? No, we already took. We have not There's taken Kate our guard. Stover. Yet. Like this is what I'm talking about. I mean, Cade Stover's an, uh, a good, solid. He's like a Nick Vanette. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. You know, I don't need a Nick Vanette in, in the third round, fourth round. Um. There's Mason Smith, defensive tackle. We've already taken one. We took Murphy. Spencer Rattler. There'd be people who would really want Rattler here. I think you and I would be interested in Puny, right? Yeah. Prospect out of Kansas. Mm -hmm. Anyone else down there? No. Um, Mason McCormick. McCormick. Yeah. Mustafa, the safety. We pick again at 118. Tanner Bartolini. Crazy combine numbers. But I don't think they take a center. Uh so do you like I think puny is the sweet spot here i think we could go puny i i like i know jordan reed mentioned him when i tweeted him who are the interior offensive line guys you like and he was one of them and we're up All again right, we're, we're up again um i like that that we're up so quick a couple fourth round picks because of uh the sam howell trade um so you Jaylen could go Ford. mason smith here defensive tackle you've already got byron murphy you like Jalen Ford, Mustafa. You could go Mason McCormick, get another guard. Yeah. You could. I like Mustafa. Like you, you turned me on to him. Yeah, he's a hitter, man. Let's go ahead and take Mustafa. Yeah, we we we've struggled to find safety the whole time. I don't want to... Um, I like Gonclaves. He's gone. Do we not have a fifth round pick? Why does it keep skimming us in the fifth round? Because we gave one up for Howell. Oh yeah. We have two six now. Yeah. Um this is where tight end. Could go tight end. We don't have I like Christian team. Boyd. I don't know if you've done any looking at him. He's solid, yeah. This would be an interesting spot for him. Uh you could go ZTF here. So we're yeah, we're in that kind of edge range where there's a couple guys. That so any of the like, yeah, we're gonna want a tight end with the next pick. I think you and I are falling into the like, hey, let's like make tight end one of the last picks kind of thing. Yeah, unless you really like the Eric Hall. I don't know, Javion Cohen, yeah, big dude. Ooh, that is a bad yeah. bad score. Uh, Ladarius Anderson from Michigan. They don't even know him. I know they're looking at the other offensive line for Michigan. Yeah. Um, what do we want to do here? You got a preference? Maybe well, we need to take a linebacker. Did we got Junior Colson? Oh yeah. Okay, we don't need to take a linebacker. No. I, I think we take edge. Yeah, maybe ZTF. Let's give Let's ZTF, take ZTF to see how that feels. And then we gotta go tight. Never back here. up and then this has got to be Ryman, I think. Where, yeah, because we're two thirty-five next. Um, although I like Lamea quite. Yeah, a lot. this let's let's take him. Let's see what happens here. You can get good right. guards. Uh, we would yeah, be let's, sweating. Let's, let's. I mean, keep in mind with tight end. There's even like Jack Westover as an undrafted free agent that the Seahawks could go after. Tim Ryman. Ryman. Still waiting for us. There's also Dominic Hampton, Hampton at safety. Yeah, well, that would be a great seventh round pick. Which which do you prefer? Tip Ryman. All right, done. Now, see, this was quote kind of worst case scenario. Is this it came our out best pretty draft? good? We came out pretty good. I mean, you got two guards, you got an edge, you got a defensive tackle, you got your linebacker, you got a safety. Who could have some upside and you got a tight end. I don't know, man. I don't think that's so bad. Yeah, like obviously Colson falling is I feel so good about this, but 
Yeah, I, I think you could take Puny at 81 and you feel pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I need to look into him a little bit more before I can really know how I feel about him. Yeah, I agree. But I think even the spot where all those guys went right in front of us, I think we came out pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing is they're sitting in a they're sitting in a good spot. Now, if they trade back from there in this scenario and you lose Murphy, yeah, then it really starts to spiral. That's that's what I mentioned in our last draft. Because we ended up with Barton and whatever, but would you rather those guys or Murphy or Fautanu? I'd rather Murphy or Fautanu, but I don't know if Schneider would agree with us on that one. Um I I don't know which of these I like the best, but I really any draft to come out with Murphy and Colston. I'm yeah, sure. to me that's what I mean. That, to me, I'm they can do. I don't really care what they do the rest of the draft after if they get those two. Yeah, yeah, and I, 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 I like you. I really like that what you turned on with Mustafa. I want an, an aggressive, uh, physical safety. Um, I think Lamea is a sleeper guard for the Seahawks in this draft. I, I, he, he seems like a Seahawks guard pick um, yeah, to me. And Grub and Huff will definitely know him well from Pac-12 play. So one thing I was watching last week, uh, Colin Coward and uh, I sent this to you guys. Colin Coward and uh, Nick Wright were saying, you know what they do? They do these simulators and they send them to their GMs. So Nick Wright is a huge Chiefs fan. He's so he's been sending his simulators to uh, Brett Veach, and he'll tell him, we need to screenshot this and send this to John Schneider. Coward says he sends stuff to, like this to Les Snead all the time, and Snead will tell him if he's on or off. We need to start doing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think John would respond. <laughs> no, no chance. Absolutely no chance. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think we should wrap there. Um, this Man, has been fun as always. I could keep going. I know you could, it's middle. Of the I night could too, but I probably should go to bed. You Sunday. should go to bed. Um, for folks that didn't hear this at the beginning, uh, I am going to do my best. I'm going to see how this goes. I'm going to try to go live every single day, at least every single weekday, but maybe every day. Between now and the draft, um, a full month ahead of the draft, um, most of the shows will be in the morning, hopefully like drive time. Uh, most of them will be like 90% of it will be Seahawks. There will absolutely be some Mariners talk that starts to, to <laughs> filter in as we go into uh, opening day this week. And I am a Mariners fan as well. So we'll talk a little bit of baseball now and then. I may start bringing in some guests here and there. We'll see how it goes. And we'll continue to do our, our Wednesday show each week. All these additional shows outside of the Wednesday show will be available for people to watch live. Um, so that will be the case. But then the audio versions will only be available for patrons. Um, we'll do some members-only chats and things of that nature and potentially some members-only, YouTube members-only Q&A, things like that. So now is the perfect time to join over at patreon.com slash hawklogger. We had at least three, maybe four people join Patreon, which we appreciate, shouted those folks out. We had a new YouTube member join, I think Noah today. So join uh, either, both, um, and support the show. We're going to get Jeff, we're going to get Jeff a high quality mic. We're going to get Jeff a mic that is going to make your listening experience that much better. Um, we can only do it with your support. So appreciate that. We're going to, Already $260,000 donated to charity over the years. Let's see if we can get that to 300 grand this year. We don't have a lot of time to make it a $40,000 donation this year. That might be asking a lot, but let's get folks uh, lined up. Let's see what we can do. So um, patreon.com slash Hawk blogger or join in the YouTube channel. Um, all that'd be great. If nothing else, click subscribe, click the bell to get notified when we go live. Jeff at real Jeff Simmons is his name staying up till past midnight in Toronto. Your lovely fiance is, uh, uh, you know, uh, amazing for putting up with what you do your hours. And I uh, always appreciate you jumping on Jeff. 
Yeah, she thinks I'm completely nuts, but she knows what she signed up for. Um, <laughs> oh man, I just can't wait for this draft. I just can't wait to see what Schneider does. Like, this is such an interesting draft. New coaching staff, his first draft, like fully in charge. I'm We're only a couple weeks away from them open up mini camps. They get it like early April. The coaches get their hands on the players. So looking yeah, like to this, that. Is, this is very fascinating to see how this draft goes. All right, everybody. Thank you for jump, jumping on all a couple thousand of you. And we will see you. I'll see you tomorrow. I will be on tomorrow morning. Um, hopefully see some of you there and we'll keep rolling all the way through the draft until then go Hawks. Have a good night.